today we are going into uh, actually the last bit of this uh, course, which is on partial differential equations. So for the next few lectures, we'll be discussing partial differential equations. Uh, you have heard of ordinary differential equations. So it's just a quick recap. When we talk about partial differential equations, we refer to an equation with more than one independent variables. All right? Partial differential equations, or PDEs, can be used to uh, represent or model uh, various uh, physical problems, uh, including in, in science, uh, in medicine nowadays, uh, very, very common as well. And um, um, social sciences even, um, in modern weather and so on, and in economics and so on. Uh, <coughs> and in fact, um, in the real world, if you really want to represent a system, you know that uh, most of the time your quantities don't just depend on another one quantity, right? Normally, it, uh, a few variables will affect uh, something, uh, the, the actual uh, physical quantity. Uh, <coughs> so, applications using um, partial differential equations actually far exceed um, those that you can use for uh, ordinary differential equations. So. Um, but before we can make use of partial differential equations to represent physical systems or problems and things like that, it's probably good to know a little bit about some characteristics uh, or even um, <coughs> properties and or methods of solving partial differential equations. And this is what we're going to do uh, today, uh, some of it, and then in the next few lectures as well. So for today, we're going to look at some basic concepts of PDEs or partial differential equations, we will look at Fourier series. Fourier series is a very important concept when we want to look at the um, analytical solutions of PDEs. Okay? And then the last thing is that we're going to use the method of separation of variables to solve one very standard um, uh, PDE. Uh, so, um, working definition for a PDE would be that it's an, e it's an equation involving one or more part uh, partial derivatives of that function. So suppose if, uh, let, let's say that function is u, that's a dependent variable u, it could depend on, let's say, two independent variables, say for example, x and t. Okay? Um, in, in many of our applications in real life, uh, the independent variables can be time, and maybe uh, the space variables x, y, and z. Okay, the three space variables and so on. So those are quite uh, common in terms of our uh, real life application. <coughs> so uh, it, it just like when we studied uh, um, ordinary differential equations, if you want to look at, analyze or study partial differential equations, it will be good to look at the different types and of PDEs and how we organize, categorize or classify them. So, uh, for example, we can talk about the order of a PDE. So, a uh, first order PDE, second order PDE, and so on. So, just like for ODE, we look at the order of the highest derivative that occur, that appear in the equation. So, the order of PDE is also the order of the highest partial derivative in the equation. So, we can classify something as first order, second order, and so on. Uh, then we have the number of variables. Uh, <coughs> for example, we can say this is a second order partial derivatives of two variables. By that we mean two independent variables. Okay? Two independent variables. And <coughs> uh, the linearity is also very important to recognize a linear or non-linear partial uh, differential equation. PDE. So, similar to uh, ODEs, when we look at, uh, when we want to see um, whether a, a, a PDE is linear or not linear, we look at only its dependent variable and its derivatives. So, for example, if we have uh, a dependent variable U, and then maybe there are other independent variables x, y, and t. Let's say there are three independent variables, and uh, we may we may uh, then uh, make sure that u and maybe d u d x, if that if these are are present, 
d two u d x d y. All these are the derivatives, right? All all possible derivatives, and if it is a linear p d e, it must be linear in u, and all is partial derivatives, which means that there cannot be products of these terms or uh, sine of it e to the power of u square root u and things like that so it must be linear in these terms okay <coughs> now <coughs> um, if we were to just examine the second order linear pde in two variables see second order right linear pde in two variables i'm using the first three uh, types to classify already. A second order linear PDE in two variables, the most uh, general way of writing it is like this. Okay, because it's supposed to be linear. So I have A U X U sub X X. This one means A D 2U by the X squared, right? Plus B times D U by D 2U by D X D Y. <coughs> and then this one is uh, plus C times uh, D 2U by D Y squared plus d times d u d x plus e times d u d y plus f times u equals to g so this is the most general way i can write uh, second order linear pd in two variables and in general your a b c d e f g can be functions in x and y they may be Non-linear functions in x and y, we don't care. It does not matter, right? <coughs> now, if your right-hand side g is identically zero, then we say that this equation is homogeneous. Otherwise, it is non-homogeneous. <coughs> so, if we write our second-order linear PDE in two variables in this way, for example, then uh, we can cl further classify the second order linear PD into three types. So the three basic types are par uh, parabolic, <coughs> hyperbolic, and elliptic PDE. So a PDE, a second order linear PDE is parabolic if, written in this form, huh, your b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero. Sounds very familiar, right? But it's got nothing to do with your <laughs> discriminant. Huh? And um, your hype is hyperbolic if b squared minus 4ac is bigger than 0 and it's called elliptic if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. <coughs> okay, so these are just the names for these equations. So we look at some uh, of these uh, <coughs> important second order uh, PDEs. Alright, so let's look at... Uh, for examples here, so this is a one-dimensional, we call it one-dimensional wave equation. Uh, now, the one-dimensional refers, the dimension, one dimension refers to the space dimension. Although if you look at this equation, it's a um, second order linear PDE in two variables. The two variables are x and t, but t is to represent time x is to represent the uh, space, the linear space. So in, 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 that, in that sense, this is a one-dimensional because there's only one space variable. Okay? The second one is a one-dimensional heat equation. Again, there's only one x here, so it's one space dimension. Now the next one is two-dimensional Laplace equation. There's two-dimensional two-dimensional Laplace equation, you can see there's x and there's y. So the x and y are the two space dimension. That's why we say it's two-dimensional, uh, but there is no t in this particular equation. So it is still two variables. And the last one, similarly, is a two-dimensional Poisson equation. Uh, it's similar to your Laplace's equation, except that the right-hand side, in general, it may not be zero. So in other words, we can uh, say that your uh, Laplace's equation is like a special case of the Poisson equation. Okay, so if we have these uh, four equations, uh, can we do something and let's see if we can classify these four equations into parabolic, hyperbolic, or elliptic. So you take a few minutes here to work on this and see if you can uh, 
identify <coughs> or classify the equations, okay? Maybe uh, <coughs> the first equation, the 2u by dt squared equals to c squared d2u by dx squared can be uh, written this way, d2u by dt squared minus c squared d2u by dx squared equals to 0. Maybe if you write this way, it's easier for you to then um, um, proceed. Okay, so if we write it also in like u sub tt, right? Then it will be minus c square u sub x x equals to zero. So using um, the, the notation that we have earlier on, your if this is your a, then a is equals to one, and you find that the cross cross term is the uh, b, right? <coughs> Let's see. Right? B U X Y. So there is no X T U sub X T here, so B is equal to zero and then your C is equal to uh, your negative C squared, right? Okay. So my A B C here, the capital A B C here refers to uh, the A B C in this. You don't have to worry about the D E F G. That one not important in this classification. So you need to work out what B square minus four A C, right? So what is your B square minus four A C? Is C square, right? So C is real. C square is always uh, positive, right? So this means that this equation is what hyperbolic, right? Hyperbolic. B. So if we quickly write down, <coughs> B will be U sub T minus C square U sub X X, right? So in this case, if we use the same notation as in this uh, formula, your A will be 0, your B is also 0, right? And your C is still negative C square. And what will be your B square minus 4AC? This point is going away. It will be 0. So which means that this particular equation is of what type? Hmm? Parabolic, yeah. So the Laplace's equation u sub x x plus u sub y y equals zero, and Poisson equation u sub x x plus u sub y y equals to some function in x and y. Go through the same process, and you will find that both are elliptic. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, <coughs> So the exercise in uh, example one is just to um, um, help us reinforce this idea of how we can classify some of the second order uh, <coughs> linear PDE in two variables. <coughs> now, if we take a PDE and we find the solution, so the solution of this PDE will be in some region where um, uh, 
in, the, in some region are in the space of those independent variables, and that means that uh, uh, the, 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 the solution will be in this, in this region, and the solution is essentially a function that satisfy this PTE everywhere inside this region. If this solution is to be applicable in this region R, let's say. Okay, then a PDE actually can have <coughs> many different solutions looking very different, right? Say, for example, if you look at <coughs> these functions, x squared minus y squared, u equals x squared minus y squared, u equals to e to the x cos y, very different. E, uh, u equals to sine x cos, hyperbolic cos, hyperbolic cosine, uh, cos y u equals to ln of x squared plus y squared. Of course, uh, <coughs> this exclude x equals to 0, y equals to 0. All these, all these are solutions. They look very different, but they are solution to the Laplace's equation. What's the Laplace's equation? This one. Okay, this is, if you don't believe me, you take, let's say you take, let's take the first one x squared minus y squared, huh? x squared minus y. Differentiate one time, differentiate two times with respect to x. What do you get? Two. Two, right? Differentiate one time, differentiate two times with respect to y. What do you get? What do you get? <laughs> Negative two, right? You add them, what do you get? Zero. So, satisfy this, right? Left hand side, go right hand side. This is a Laplace's equation, okay? Now, you take the second one. E to the x cosine y. Differentiate with respect to x one time, two time. Green mentally, one time, two time. What do you get? E to the x cosine y, correct? Now, differentiate this one with respect to y two times. Mentally, what do you get? Negative e to the x cosine y, right? Because you keep the e to the x, you differentiate cosine y two times with respect to y, you get negative cosine y, right? Add them, what do you get? Zero. Satisfy this one. And you can go on. This one and this one. I hope uh, you are familiar with hyperbolic functions, yeah? Anybody not familiar with hyperbolic functions? Trigo functions, you know. Hyperbolic, shine, and cosh. Okay, right? Because later on, we are going to use it. <laughs> okay? <coughs> So, uh, <coughs> the lesson here is this. In terms of PDE, the function can be very different uh, <coughs> for this, uh, as, as a solution for the same differential equation. However, if you want to obtain a unique solution, uh, then that's different already. For a unique solution, you need to apply some condition. So, so in this case, to obtain a unique solution, you need additional condition, and usually these are called either the initial condition or the boundary condition. Okay. <coughs>